What's up, YouTube? Man, this is going to be a weird one for me. Prior to all this happening with the Olympics, I don't even think I could call myself a real dancer. And that's crazy uh, because now <laughs> the bar has been set so low that even somebody as humble as me gets to step up to the plate and drop my two cents into the bucket. Uh, so... Many of you probably don't know this, but I did about seven years in ballet. I mean, that's what happens when your mom is from the USSR. You're going to be taking ballet as a kid as much as you hate it. I don't know. Partnering class was pretty cool. I could manhandle ballerinas all day. I got no complaints about that. Uh, but I did seven years of that, and then I actually became a ballroom dance instructor, and I did that for over a year and a half. Uh... I then gave that up to go work at a law firm and do other more lucrative things. But the point being is, compared to this, I <laughs> I am a full-fledged dancer. So let's talk about, real quick, the problems here with this Raygun girl and her husband, which this is a clip of her husband. Um, both of them have some splaining to do, especially since... You just destroyed breakdancing as a sport, an Olympic sport, for everybody else. There are good dancers that potentially had a future where they could perform in the Olympics. Their dreams could come true. Now that's never going to happen because you crapped on it so bad just so you could say, I was an Olympic athlete. And here's the problem. There are other more qualified... You can't tell me that there aren't more qualified dancers from Australia that would have actually put on a good show, a good performance. Um, they were overlooked on purpose. Uh, let's play this clip real here. <laughs> uh, man, I'm talking about as bad as she's dancing. Let's show this clip real here. <laughs> let's show this clip real quick here. And it will show her husband in here. And uh, holy cow. So here's Raygun. There's her husband. And this might have been at like... The, come on, bro. Bro. You know what this reminds me of? Like when we would get d done dancing. And then we would just put on like some break dance music. And everybody would just kind of mess around in the studio. And they would just try weird offhand moves but that's not anything that should ever make it to a stage in the olympics that is just absolutely terrible and i've heard a few different dancers critique and give excuses to these people i mean to be fair she's older for a break dancer um these moves are hard to do if you are not in good shape and even if you can do them if you don't have enough strength and energy, they don't look right. They look like crap. The whole point of breakdancing is you're, the reaction that you're getting out of people when breakdancing properly is, holy cow, how do they do that? I didn't think the human body could do that. How are they moving like that? They're like twitch moving. How do you do that? That's the reaction that you're going for in breakdancing. Um, and as a result... There are many more male break dancers than there are female break dancers. That's just a fact of the sport. So she might have like a little bit of len leniency there if they absolutely could not find another dancer at all. And they were like, look, you got to do it because we need a female to represent, you know, Australia. And you're the only female break dancer that we got. The other three broke their leg. But that's not what happened. Uh, and on a side note, there was a Jamaican bobsled team that scored really bad, but that's what the Olympics is all about. It's all about um, the diversity of all the different people on this planet. So, you know, that's what the Olympic Games are all about. They just had a swimmer who just learned how to swim. And hey, if you're the only person in your country that knows how to swim, well, then by default, you are the Olympic swimmer for your country. Um, if you are at the top of the totem pole, even if you can only make it halfway across the pool, hey, if you're the best guy at swimming from your country, then you're going to go to the Olympics. You know, your people need you to at least show up 
and you know try to look as good as you can and you know yeah <laughs> so those are kind of like the excuses that I'm hearing for her. I completely understand that maybe somebody would be put into a situation like that. The problem is that's not the case. Uh, her and her husband were on the board that decided who the dancer was going to be. It seems as though they, on purpose, overlooked better dancers so that she would have a spot. And I don't know how she thought this was going to go, that... Everybody was just going to overlook her performance and never talk about it again. And for the rest of her life, she could brag and introduce herself as an Olympian. And nobody was going to know how bad she actually sucked. Um, you know, I think that's kind of what she was thinking. Like, she was just going to use this for all the perks. I don't know why else anybody else would do this. Um, especially because... And let me just tell you this from personal experience. I've been to dance studios all over Michigan. And every single one of them has video recording equipment in the corner. Okay. <laughs> Any dancer that's going to do anything has a whole team of people helping them. That is your studio. They will record you and they will show you just how bad you suck. My old ballet teacher would play things back over and over and pause things and... You know, uh, right there. You suck right there. Why are you doing that? Why are you dragging your foot right there? And right here. There's no energy here. Why? You know, um, that's just the reality of it. So if you were going to perform in the Olympics, you better damn believe that there is going to be a bunch of videos of your routine. And you should be looking over that. For goodness sake... People that come to a uh, a dance class studio to learn how to ballroom dance for their wedding, for their wedding, uh, these people record themselves because they don't want to look like fools in front of their family. They want to know exactly what they look like out there. So I have helped plenty of people work out their um, marriage routine that they were going to dance to at a wedding. And yeah, we're recording all of that and they're looking over that because if you can't nail a certain part of a combination or a move or a dance that you're doing before the wedding, if it's really that bad, we'll cut that out. We will put something a little bit easier in there that you can do so it's not going to destroy the whole dance. Well, this girl's Ray Gun's entire routine already consisted of the lowest level moves you could possibly do and she did them half ass with no energy and i get it you are like what a 45 year old woman trying to break dance it's extremely hard to do you have to be super strong and even if you can half ass do the moves they're going to look like crap you want them to look supernatural you want there to be so much energy in them that people again say holy cow i didn't know that the human body could even do that right and i just don't see how it's possible that she didn't know exactly what her routine looked like before she went on stage at the olympics okay so she knew how bad she sucked. She didn't give a damn. Uh, she thought she could just do it and get away with it anyway with no backlash. You cannot do that when you and your husband, who, let's watch this again, you and your husband were on the board of people that decided who the dancer was going to be and you gave that spot to yourself. Oh my goodness, just watching this. What is going on here? Yes, there needs to be some accountability. I want to make sure that no Olympic athletes are getting passed up for some BS like this. Because from my understanding of it, there are better dancers. Uh, they just excluded them so that she could give this spot to herself and be a greedy piece of shit that literally destroyed Olympic breakdancing for everybody else. And that is so bad. I, I just, I, it's hard to wrap around your head around how, how bad that is. Like you are, you perform so bad that you are ruining it for other people's futures. Like when, when this was announced that there was going to be breakdancing at the Olympics, um, 
You know, I have dancer friends that were excited, you know, and there were younger people that were like, oh my goodness, it could happen now. I could actually be an Olympic dancer if I keep practicing. Like there is, you know, Olympic break dancing now. And man, that didn't last long, did it? <laughs> that did not last long at all. Thanks to this woman and her husband. And honestly, they need to be investigated for this. Something like this better never happen again. Again, you know, if you are the only one from your country that can do some sort of half-assed performance and your country needs you to represent them at the Olympics, hey, that's one thing, man. You know, if you're on some kind of swimming team and you can only make it halfway across the pool, but you're the only one from your country that even knows how to swim, I'll take that. But it, when you overlook a bunch of people that are better than you, um, just to give yourself that spot, that's a terrible form of fraud, some sort of Olympic fraud. And we need to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. Her and her husband need to be accountable for this. And yeah, her husband is definitely part of it because he, he sat on that board that decided who was actually gonna, gonna dance. And talk about a sham of a marriage. I was like, this guy was probably too scared to tell his wife how bad she really sucks. But after watching the video of him dancing too, they're both terrible together. So they probably live in some kind of echo chamber where like, did you see that somersault? I mean, but damn, did you see the style on it though? Like, uh, look at these little Tourette-ish movements that this guy's doing. Oh, he's feeling himself. <laughs> yeah, they need to be held accountable for this. Um, they knew exactly what she looked like doing this routine. And I'm going to tell you right now, she might be able to be like a breakdance teacher for beginner level children to at least help them try to get coordinated, but they would quickly need to find a different teacher that could actually help them with the intricate moves uh, that she just cannot do, right? You can only teach what you kind of know, and she only kind of knows the beginner level stuff here. The other thing is too, it really looks like she practiced her routine for like what a week or two you can't tell me that you have actually been practicing this routine over and over and over again and then this is what it turned into i'm sorry i i don't consider myself an actual real dancer at this point and i'm retired and i could kill this routine i give me like three or four days and part of that is due to the fact that i would be strong enough to hold my body up and you know, do some of these things with a little bit of energy. And I mean, if it's that bad, where like some washed up has been, that wasn't even been <laughs> uh individual like me can out dance you after I, you know, I give myself three or four days of practice going over her routine. And I am saying routine with air quotations in the air, you know, um, I, Apparently, I'm an, Olymp an Olympic-level breakdancer, and I just had no idea. Um, so, yeah, this is actually terrible for the dance community. A lot of people's dreams were just crushed. <laughs> it's like they were given uh, a sand grain of hope. Oh, my goodness. You know, breakdancing is an Olympic sport now. I have a chance. Oh, and it's gone. It's gone. Breakdancing is not an Olympic sport anymore. Because of Ray Gunn. Ooh. And her husband. So, um, yeah, this needs to be investigated. I'm all for it. And that's my two and a half cents on this. Have an awesome day, everybody.